In this video, I'll be giving a brief introduction to number theory. And as the name suggests, this course has something to deal with the numbers. There are a lot of numbers that we have been talking about from since early childhood. We have even numbers, we have odd numbers, prime numbers, natural numbers, and we have happy numbers. So happy number have this sequence 1, 7, 10, 13, and so on. Why do we call this as happy number? Let's just look at here a uh, informal definition. A non-negative integer that eventually becomes 1 is called a happy number. Let's see, for example, I consider a number n is equal to 28. This is available in the list. This is called a happy number. Let's see how this is a happy number. Pick up the individual digits in the given number. So I'm going to just put 2 square and I'm going to take it at 8 square. So this value is 4. This is 64. Just sum these two quantity and I'm going to get a next number that is 68. Again, repeat the same process, 6 square and 8 square. So I'm going to get 6 square, 8 square. This is 36. Here it is 64. Add these two numbers. I'm going to get the next number, which is 100. Now I got three digits and I'm going to repeat the process for three digits. So it is 1 square, 0 square plus 0 square. And this will finally turn it out by addition. This will finally turn it out into 1. So this is how a number, when eventually returned to 1 with this process, is called a happy number and we have Fermat's number and this list is long there are a lot of application of the numbers that we are dealing with and for more such sequences we can look at oeis open encyclopedia of integer sequence and numbers are not only arranged in sequences but sometimes they follow a shape and to understand that what do i mean by shape let's take an example of a triangular numbers so the triangular numbers are those numbers which can be arranged in the triangle. Say for example, T1 is a triangular number 1. So I'm only going to consider one dot that's as a number. T2, this is the sum of the consecutive natural numbers. So if I add here now two more dots, this one dot is previous and I'm going to add two more dots. So that's what I'm going to get as a triangle. T3, the next triangular number, sum the consecutive number 1 plus 2 plus 3. I'm going to get 1 two dots this is because of one and two and then i add one two and three so i'm going to get one more triangle so the numbers which are arranged in the shape of the triangle are called triangular numbers so these are the triangular number and similarly we got pentagonal number hexagonal numbers and so on but the question is who started observing and making these numbers so important and finding the application of these such numbers. So now there are a list of numbers that we have been working on. If we go back to the history and search back, one of the number that has been observed in the early age and have a lot of application is the prime numbers. And we can see that Euclid provided us two major results. One, fundamental theorem of arithmetic which says that a number be the least if it is measured by a prime number or I can say an integer n can be factorized into the prime numbers. And to find out then we can apply Euclidean algorithm. And the repeated application of this allow us to write a number into its product of the prime numbers. These two results are really important in investigation of the different properties in the subject number theory or we say in the subject of higher arithmetic. We get an opportunity to search the prime numbers. We know that there is only even prime number that is 2 and the remaining prime numbers are odd. So I can split this into the classes. Say that odd prime number are in the form 4k plus 1 or 4k plus 3. The both are odd prime numbers. So we might want to know are the classes of 4k plus 1 primes is equal to 4k plus 3. So it allows us to investigate properties based on these prime number. And noticing most of the proofs on the prime numbers are due to contradictions so we will be learning how to write formal proof using the contradictions another things added to the number theory is due to gauss he said that mathematics is the queen of science and number theory is the queen of math he introduced a symbol that we know as the congruences and it is denoted by this equivalent sign. This has close analogy with algebraic equality. We say A is congruent to B modulo N if N divides A minus B. Because of this analogy and the resemblance in the symbol, we approach divisibility question through the arithmetic of remainder. Congruences can be looked as the modular arithmetic where an integer have a binary or decimal representation system. For example, I may write 
a capital integer n in the binary representation form so i can write this in the form of base that is 2 or maybe i have some another base as b and this allow us to write down the number into binary number system we can look the theory to solve linear congresses this is similar to what we solve it as a linear equations i have this equation or i may write this as ax congruent to c modulo b we can apply congress theory to solve something very very large terms say i want to know this 2 to the power 1000 is congruent to what or what is the last unit place of this number so i can consider this into modulo 10 and i can consider what is the unit digit of this big number so it allow us to solve the large number and it allow us to find what is the remaining residue here so as we once learned the linear congress we can find out the system of linear congress solution by learning what is chinese remainder theorem another important contribution in the subject is due to fermat a lawyer by profession and he provided elegant results the one that the first one is fermat's theorem which says that if p is a prime and a is any integer where p does not divide a then a raised to power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p and fermat's last theorem which says x raised to power n plus y raised to power n is equal to z raised to power n has no integral solution when n is greater than 2 this problem was unsolved over 100 years but now it is solved the proof was given by andrews while and he provided two times the proof the first proof was a little incorrect and again recorrected by himself but it took many years for people to explore what could be the possible logical argument to give the justification that why there is no integral solution to this particular problem and we're also going to explore some of the contributions of Euler. Euler contribute a lot to mathematics and so to number theory we are also going to look at what is Euler's theorem in number theory who just extended the Fermat theorem we just discussed that it's not only a raised to power p is congruent to one model of p but in fact we can going to have a raised to power phi n is congruent to one modulo n and where phi n is all those numbers which are relatively prime with n we are also going to talk about quadratic residues and we can explore what are Euler's criteria to check the quadratic residue we are going to talk about primitive rules and as an application number theory is a fundamental course that is used for encryption or the security issues in fact we, in 21st century we can't think a world without network and security issues and the key to the network securities is the prime number and hence number theory plays a very vital role in the, our daily life